So in all my other videos, I talk a little bit about technique. We've gone through tool technique, we've talked about blank making technique, and it's all been about technique. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to talk a little bit about tools and tool setup. But before we get too deep into the video, it's a shout out to my favorite subscriber who made me this nice shirt that now has a logo on it. She's also my daughter, so it's a shout out to her for making me this nice shirt. So, today's, today's topic is going to be out of round pens. And you'll see this a lot where you'll get the pen, you'll take it off your mandrel, and you'll see that it's out of round, meaning that I've got a little bit more on one side than I have on the other side. And to me, there's only two real reasons that we're going to get out of round. It's going to be our initial setup on our mandrel, or it's going to be our actual lathe itself and that we don't have everything aligned on the lathe. So in this video, we're going to take a look at two different parts. We're first going to look at the mandrels themselves. I'm going to give you a little bit of um, history on all the different mandals that are out there. I'm going to give you my preferred setup. Once again, as everything in my videos, it's my preferred setup. So if you've got other ways of doing it, put it down in the comments. I'm always looking for suggestions down in the comments. And uh, after that, I'm going to give you a little bit of idea how to check so that your lathe is in perfect alignment. So with that, let's get right to the techniques. So as I mentioned, the two biggest things with turning around out of round is your equipment. It's first the mandrel and how you got your pen blank set up. And secondly, it's going to be your actual lathe itself. So let's take a look at the mandrel and how that impacts things. So this is the traditional mandrel. Um, the non-professional version is fixed at this end. And then what we do is we put our blank on here using our bushings. And then we load this side down with you know, tons of spacers or another tube. Anything to get it so that when we put on our neural nut on this end, we have everything pressed in and everything is compressed to hold this blank into place so that when we put it in, we can now do the turning on it. The challenge with this, though, is simply pressure. So if I take this off and I want to take a look at this, because of the fact that I'm putting my pressure on all the way over here using a live center, a 60-degree 60, 60 point live center, and I if I put any kind of pressure on here and I put it in, it's point pressure. It means I've got just a single little point here that's taking all the pressure of my tailstock and it's not that hard to bend this. So you can see if I was to use this mandrel in this setup and I put any pressure on here and it bends, then I'm going to get this motion where it's going to be kind of elliptical. That's going to cause me out of center. So then after that, Manufacturers started doing a whole bunch of different things. This was one that actually screws onto your headstock. And it will then set this side, but we still have the same problem on this side. I'd have to use spacers. I'm going to have to use my neural nut. Once again, if you're using this stuff, more power to you. I'm just trying to help you figure out what's the best way to set up and help you get out around. So then to eliminate all that extra space that we have on here, we can switch to this, this invention. This is called a mandrel saver. It's basically a live center, spins on here. And the nice part about it is I can bypass all of this, and there you go. Now you can see that when I'm there, it's, it's a very small amount of space between here and here, so I really can't get on any bending on here or deflection. The other thing is if you look at it, it is significantly more surface area. So instead of it being a simple point that was in the little hole here, I now have all this surface area that's now mating with this surface area, and I don't have to apply nearly as much pressure on this one, and I'm not going to get any deflection inside of here because it takes you know, significantly more pressure for a smaller amount of uh, mandrel to bend. So another option that, they ha that you have is this mandrel here. This is called a professional turner's mandrel. And this one has a little nut here that you can screw and move on. And then you can adjust the space that I have here. Once again, now I'm getting a lot less deflection than I have here, and so it does work really well. If you have this set up, I'm gonna make this one suggestion. Take the suggestion or not. But most people will then, you know, if, we're if I'm using the mandrel saver, I'll completely eliminate the nut, I'll put on the, the blank that I want to turn, so you can see here I put on this blank, 
and then I put on the mandrel saver on top of it and then adjust it so that I have out exactly the spacing that I need on here. If you're using this setup, I'm going to make this suggestion to you. Still get this piece here so that it's you know, still here so you can screw it on and still use your knurl nut. And what you do here is then you just turn the knurl nut on here, tighten this end down, turn, tighten the knurl nut on here. And the reason I'm recommending that is because now I've got even more surface, surface mating, right? I've got all the mating that's going on here on the knurl nut onto the entire bushing. And then I've got this simply having to hold on to it over here. And I don't have to put nearly as much pressure on here. It's what's killing us is the pressure. As I said, the more pressure that we're putting on this thing in this way, if it's not completely uniform across the entire surface here, you're going to get that deflection. That's what's going to cause us to go out around. So if you're going to do this one, I highly recommend that you still use the neural nut. Tighten it down with your fingers. We only have to be finger tight on here. And then use this. And now you've got the best of all worlds. I've got very little surface pressure on here. I've got a lot less surface pressure on here, or pressure into the device on here. And I've got something now that I'm going to get very little deflection on because of the fact that this is such a short distance. My preferred method, though, is not to use any of these mandrels. I like to use the turn between center mandrel that comes in a package like this. And you can see here, it's a live center, spins freely here on this side, and this is my dead center, and this one goes into my headstock. So the nice thing about this is, I now have absolutely no mandrel sitting there to put any pressure on and to get this to move anywhere that I want. So you can see here, uh, had a little problem with this one before. You can see here, that when I tighten this all up, and I'm not going to go all the way through for you, that when I tighten this all the way up, I have very little pressure sitting on here between these two, so I can't get any deflection because there's no rod to throw the deflection out of, out of uh, center here. And the nice thing about it is I can then completely adjust this to any dimension that I want, and I'm not using nuts and I'm not using uh, wrenches to move this all around. I'm simply using the device the way that it was intended. So there is a couple, there is one little design flaw if you ask me on this one, is if you look really, really close, and I'll bring this up to here. See, there's a little relief cut here. And I have found through practical use that if I let that relief cut sit there, if I do put any pressure on that bushing, that eventually those bushings do bend a little bit and the bushing does get stuck on this, on this rod. So what I have found, and depending on the vendor that you buy this from, I know that if you haven't gone out and bought this yet, Exotic Blanks does sell this um, turn between centers system. And as I said, if it's me, this is the preferred method that I would do it. They'll also provide you a one quarter inch nylon washer and if you if you have this system and you don't have this nylon washer go pick it up at home depot what this does is gives me perfect spacing over that little relief cut that they had in there so then this way these bushings go on and off incredibly freely and even if i get any kind of pressure on here this is never going to stick to this part that's sitting here so then that way when i put this all together it's very easy for me to be able to move this in and out. Now, obviously the disadvantage to this system is clearly that I can only work on one pen blank at a time. So if I had a, in this case, this is a Majestic that I'm working on right here. If I was to do this one, I'm gonna do the top at one time, I'm gonna do the bottom at another time. I don't really see that as a big problem. To me, that's the best way for me to do it. I've been doing it now for five or six years using this setup and this system and I will tell you I would never ever go back to the other one just for the advantage of being able to do two because at that point I'm getting that deflection in and out on doing two and I had way more out of rounds when I did it that way. So one final system that they have out there 
is what's called pure turning between centers. And if you use the pure turning between centers, the difference is you have to pick up a set of bushings for every single kit that you're going to use. And what the bushings are, where the hole is here, instead of it being a 7 millimeter hole that's here to fit over these mini mandrels, it's chamfered in. And then you would actually use your 60 degree centers inside there to push this thing together. So I'd have a dead center and a live center moving on here. There's also people who will advocate that they do not use bushings at all. And that the proper way of turning a pen is to do it simply using um, a micrometer and being able to, to do everything using this. You know what the dimensions are. You can actually put this on your kit, find your dimension that you want there, your diameter that you want there. And then as I'm turning, I can go through it and I can make sure that I've got it as a perfect fit. Honestly, the problem with that for me is it takes all the fun out of it. Once I figured out that if I have this thing set up perfectly and I have my bushing set up on the device properly, I don't have any problem with out around. So I don't have any need to go to that extra level. And the other thing that I find is in all of my pens, as I've mentioned on numerous other videos, I like to do a little bit of sculpting on it. So if you take a look close at the end here, my pens are tapered in, they're tapered out, they've got some sort of pattern on it. It would be really hard for me to micrometer this because I would then in essence be micrometering where I would want the pen blank to end, not necessarily where the pen blank is ending. So with that, I'm going to tell you, the easiest setup that you can have and the most cost effective setup you can have is using this turn between center system. Uh, Invest in the nylon washer. You're not going to go wrong with it. And then the beauty of it is, as you're doing this, you'll find that you're going to get fast enough and you don't ever have to worry about any kind of deflection or movement or anything that's going out of round or out of center because I've got it all lined up. This is the perfect system for this. So with that, I'm going to drop and I'm going to cut over to looking at um, setting up the actual physical lathe. So the second part of the equation is actually making sure that my headstock is in perfect alignment with my tailstock. And it's not as difficult to test this as you might think. What you need are two point centers. And you can see here I've got two of them. These, in this case, they're both dead centers, but for what we're doing, it really doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put one in my headstock and one in my tailstock. And I'm going to slowly move them together to see if I've got those two points to match. But the key to it, and where I see people not doing this correctly, is that they don't lock down the headstock. So if they're, so they'll come in here, they'll test it, they'll take a look at it, and they'll say, is my measurement good? But my headstock's not locked down. And if there's any deflection then when I actually lock my headstock in so that there's any kind of deflection there, I wouldn't be able to tell. So what I like to do is I'll just like to keep them a little bit, you know, um, apart, and then I will slowly move them together and I will see that in this case they do touch and that they are centered. Uh, it's a little hard to see on my camera. It might look like it's a little bit off, but it's not. It's right on each other and I know that I've got this all set up. If this is not the case, you know, I hate to tell you this, but you're going to have to consult your individual lathe manual and figure out whether you make your adjustment. Primarily, you're going to make it on your headstock because you can then put in a little bit of a shim in there and to move it down, or you can make your adjustment on your tailstock. In my case, because this is a Powermatic, I would always make my adjustment on the headstock. Um, from the manufacturer, normally these things are always set up perfectly. But you'll see that as you've been putting pressure on here and you've been doing things and moving things inside and out, that's when you're going to see that you'll eventually get a little bit of deflection in there. It's not uh, a major challenge. You're just simply going to unscrew the four screws that are coming in under here the majority of the time, put a little bit of shim in there, or actually just turn it and re-put the screws back down and continually test it the way we just showed you to test it. So in that case, now we've, we've taken a look at it, and we now know that I don't have any deflection in my headstock to my tailstock. The other last thing that you would want to know is um, speed does play in... Uh, a uh, big 
uh, challenge, if you will, when you're actually using your headstock and your tailstock if it's not aligned. If it's not aligned, you'll actually find that the slower you turn, the more uh, enunciated the out of round will be because you'll actually get the flume, flume type motion on it. Where if you are actually going in and you're turning it at the fastest speed, which is what I recommend in all my other videos, it will actually come down to the fact that it'll balance itself back off a little bit and then you'll have no problem with that one. So, you know, if, if you do have them perfectly aligned, I would tell you if you have it perfectly aligned, there's no reason that you can't have your lathe on the fastest that it'll go to make your cuts. So with that, let's get back. So with that, we're done. As I said, it's really two different things. It's either you don't have proper mandrel set up, and if you're going to get a mandrel, I highly advise going to the turn between centers mandrel that I have in the video. And if you're going to do it, make sure you use those nylon washers or it's going to be your lathe itself. And if it's going to be your lathe, it's not going to be that complicated to get it to set up so that you get it back in perfect alignment. Check your owner's manual, check other YouTube videos. They'll have everything there to help you get everything aligned. So as always, I thank you for watching my video. If you like the video, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel. I always appreciate it. <clears throat> and I'm always looking for more topics. So if you've got an idea, throw it down in the topics. If you've got a different way of doing things, put it down in the top put it down in the comments. This is a forum that's intended to get people to talk to each other about the different things that and challenges that you faced and how you overcame them. So with that, I thank you. Have a good day. This video made possible by the fine folks at Exotic Blanks. For all your pen making needs, Exotic Blanks has you covered. Find them at www.exoticblanks.com. And also by Pen Makers International, the educational source for pen making.